Hello, my name is Emily Koch from SEI US and welcome to our LEAP training video series. In this video, we will be focusing on how to make the most out of the results view in LEAP. Let's begin! Intuitive and easy to use reporting is a key ingredient of LEAP helping users to visualize and interpret results and catch errors. The LEAP model calculates a huge set of results, which can be easily displayed as charts and tables, customized to the user's needs. If you would like to follow along with the tutorial, open up the Fredonia dataset built into LEAP. To ensure we are working from the same data, go to Area, Revert to Version, and then 4.40 cost-benefit analysis. If you were previously working on the Fredonia model and are interested in saving your work, click No and first save the area you were working on. Otherwise, click Yes to restore this version and then click on OK. After your model has loaded, Click on the results view from the left hand pane. Click yes to calculate the results. What you see in your chart or table is dependent upon what you select in the tree, the result you select from the results selection menu, and your choice of displayed categories and x-axis. Since LEAP is commonly used to plan for future energy policy, policymakers are often interested in knowing the feedstock fuel mix used to meet electricity supply requirements over time. We will go through the steps in producing an energy supply graph which shows this for Fredonia. This is the main interface for the results screen. Here you can view results in three different ways. As a chart, in a table, or you can view the chart and table in one screen by selecting the tab called Split. For this exercise, I would like to see my result as a chart, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the Chart tab. The first step in customizing a graph is to go through the tree and select the branches you are interested in viewing results for. It is important to note that you can only select one branch at a time and you can only view the results of the branches directly underneath. For example, when I click on the demand branch, I can view the results for the household, industry, transport, and commercial sectors. However, when I click on household, I cannot view the results for the other sectors, only for the household sector. Similarly, when I click on Demand, I cannot see the information under the Transformation sector. You can only review one result at a time. Since I'm interested in the feedstock fuel mix used to produce electricity, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Transformation branch and then Electricity Generation. After you have selected a branch, Use the result selection box at the top of the screen to select a result that you're interested in. There are many categories under the result selection box, each with a subset of results. You can choose demands, costs, various environmental effects, or data variables. For this particular example, I'm going to go ahead and select the Outputs by Feedstock Fuel result under the Transformation category. The next step is to pick the scenario you're interested in from the Scenario Selection box. I'm going to click on the Mitigation scenario, which is going to tell me what the fuel supply mix will be after all the mitigation options are considered. You may have different scenarios based on how you developed your model. Use the button below the chart's x-axis to pick the dimension you want to see in your chart or table. Different categories of results have different dimensions. For this example, I would like to see my x-axis in years. 
When picking a dimension for the x-axis, you can also specify whether you want to see all the items or only a few. If you choose Selected, you will be shown a dialog box in which you can check off the items to be displayed. I would like to keep it as All Items. Similarly, you can change what is shown in your graph from the Legend menu. For this example, I would like to present my results by the different types of fuels that were used to generate electricity. Additional options to filter x-axis or legend data are often found on the results view bar at the top of the screen. The buttons on the left axis are used to pick the scaling factor or units for the chart. The class of the units, whether it be energy, mass, volume, and so on, is determined by the category of result you are examining. Leap automatically chooses a scaling factor, but you can subsequently override this by clicking on the scaling button. For most reports, you can also choose a denominator variable. For example, you may wish to view energy demand per unit of GDP or population. Click on the denominator button to set or remove the denominator variable or you could simply select None. Click on the More button in the Results View toolbar to view additional ways to customize your graph. Use the Value button to show your results as absolute values, percent shares, cumulative values, index values, or year-on-year -year growth rates. You can also compare results between scenarios by clicking on the Comparison button. Here you will see different ways to present your results between the two scenarios. You can view differences between scenarios, avoided results, or show a series of wedges showing how the elements of a scenario are reduced to become another scenario. If you are unable to find the results that you are interested in, this may be because they aren't being calculated. Double check the assumptions in your analysis. In Analysis view, go to General Results to Save. Look at what is being calculated and make sure what you're interested in is checked off. Then press Close and return to Results view. Once you have selected the desired content, Numerous options are available for configuring results through the customization buttons on the right side of the screen. You can change your choice of chart. For example, you can have an area chart instead of a bar chart. You can change the colors through various preset color options. There are other things that you can do such as change the grid lines, change whether you want data on the chart itself. You can also export your chart to use within a report. This can easily be done by copying the chart to the clipboard. You can also export the chart into PowerPoint or Excel or save the chart as a graphic. You can configure and save favorite charts in much the same way as you store bookmarks in a web browser. This makes it easy to quickly switch between key results and an analysis. To save a chart, simply go to Save Chart as Favorite and enter an easy to remember name. Then click on OK. Now when I go into Favorites, I can see the chart that was just created. For the next exercise, I'm going to quickly show you how to customize a table. Start by clicking on the Energy Demand by Sector graph from the Favorites folder. This graph was created in the same manner as the previous exercise by selecting the desired branch, results type, scenario, x-axis, legend categories, and scale. The results can be viewed as a table by clicking on the table view. Then go to the x-axis and change the yearly interval to say every five years so that a more reasonable amount of data can be shown. In the table view, 
a levels control is shown letting you pick the number of levels of depth to be reported. This lets you examine how a total value at a given branch is made up of the various branches underneath. When the level is set to 1, which is the default value, you will be shown results for the branches immediately below the one clicked on in the tree. In this case, the demand branch is selected. Here, you can see that the various demand sectors are shown in the table. When you set the levels to zero, you will see a summary of results only for the current branch. When the level is set to two or more, you will see multiple levels of branches, including the various subsectors under each demand sector. When displaying multiple levels, you can click on the Match Names checkbox to group branches of the same name. You can also use the subtotals box to show results at each different level. These tables are color-coded to make it easy to interpret detailed results and provide different levels of subtotals. There are also customization buttons available for tables. You can change the number formatting, increase or decrease the number of decimal places, change the font size. You can also export your data to Excel. By default, auto refresh is on and results are updated immediately when any changes are made in the results view. For larger data sets where refreshing results is slower or in cases where you want to make many selections at the same time, this behavior might be inconvenient. For these situations, you can switch off auto refresh and then use the refresh button to manually force the chart or table to be refreshed. For additional information, check out the LEAP website at www.energycommunity.org. Here you can view the LEAP user guide, tutorials, and new training videos. Use our forums to post any questions you may have, and remember to be as specific as possible and include any details causing the problems such as error messages and steps that were taken that may have resulted in an issue.